We hear about climate change all the time. It's a current and serious issue facing the world today. Overexposure by the media has numbed us to the real threat we are facing. In 2015, a study showed that only 11% of Britons surveyed thought that climate change was one of the most important issues facing Britain today. But although we are bombarded by information, do we really know what climate change is, how it affects our ecosystems, or even how UK scientists are studying it? I'm here today at the Open University in Milton Keynes to meet some researchers and find out more about natural and man-made climate change. But to get to the bottom of the issue, I think we need to start by looking up. Francis, why are we here at the observatory? Well, climate change is a natural process that's affected several planets throughout the solar system. I studied glaciers on the planet Mars, huge flows of ice that have been affected by climate change. Oh, I didn't know there was water ice on Mars. Where is all this ice? Well, in the present day, Mars has ice at its poles in thick polar ice caps, and down towards the mid-latitudes, this ice is in the subsurface. But past changes in climate have changed the distribution of ice over the surface. What has caused this climate change? Well, the distribution of ice over the surface of Mars is affected by where the heat falls on the surface from the sun. So if you take this orange, you can be the sun. In the present day, Mars is only slightly tilted towards the sun, only about 25 degrees. And its poles don't receive much direct sunlight. The poles are therefore the coldest part of the planet and ice can accumulate here. However, in the past, the poles were much more tilted towards the sun. And it's during these periods that the poles received much more direct heat. And so they were warmer and places like the mid-latitudes and the equator were much colder. And during these periods, the ice was lost from the pole and accumulated in the mid-latitudes and equatorial regions and huge glaciers advanced across the surface. So understanding these frozen landscapes will allow us to understand past changes in climate on Mars. Yes, exactly. Do you mind if I borrow that? I think I might have a use for it. We've been talking about climate change on another planet, but natural environmental change is something that happens here on Earth. Scientists in these labs are studying such processes. I'm here to talk to Katrina to find out more. We've been hearing about periods of glaciation on Mars. Can you tell us about periods of glaciation on Earth? Yes, I can. So, Earth's climate has also varied in such a way. For example, past climate records indicate that the past one million years or so of Earth's history has seen it transform from cold glacial periods with lots of ice to warm interglacial periods with lack of ice. These cycles are thought to have occurred roughly every 100,000 years. Is the planet's orbit relative to the Sun important in this? Earth's orbit around the Sun is also thought to produce these variations from glacial to interglacial periods. So Charlotte, take this orange and let's pretend this is the Sun. So here's the Earth, of course, this isn't the scale. So as we change Earth's orbit around the Sun, when it becomes more elliptical, we get it further away from the Sun and we get these cold glacial periods. Whereas when Earth's orbit is more circular around the Sun, we're much closer, much warmer, and therefore we get these interglacial periods. So why is it important to understand past natural climate change? Understanding past climate change is really important in order to understand how sensitive the response of Earth is to changes in ice volume or greenhouse gases. Present day climate change is occurring way more rapidly than what we have seen in the past due to carbon dioxide emissions caused by human activity. Thanks, Katrina. We are starting to see unprecedented rates of human-induced climate change here in the world. Animals may have been able to adapt to climate change in the past, but now animal and plant species have new challenges that they may not be able to overcome. This is affecting all types of species all over the world, including internationally important ones right here in the UK. Hi Rich, what are you up to? Hi Charlotte, I'm looking for a shag, but it's not what you think. The shag is a medium-sized black seabird that lives in the UK. Well, why is climate change important for shags? 
Well, climate change can affect shags in two ways. Firstly, by warming the oceans and affecting the availability of their fish prey. And secondly, windy weather associated with climate change can cause many shags to die. Well, what have you found? Well, my research shows that shags breeding on the Isle of Maine, Scotland, have declined rapidly over the past 30 years. Over the same period, their diet has changed from one fish to 16 different types, while their breeding success has increased. This suggests that climate change is not all bad news, but we must continue to study populations to understand what's going on. So I better get back to it. Picture this wetland with a lot less reeds and a bit more moss, and it could remind you of a boggy peatland. And I know just the guy to talk to about this. Hi Matt. I thought I might find you here. What are you up to? Well at the moment I'm collecting water samples from this fen here. Oh really? Is there anything interesting in the water here? Well in fact there's loads of carbon and I'm looking at the way it's degraded in the water. So how does this relate to your research? Well, I work out in the swamp forests of Borneo, which are kind of like the tropical cousins of, uh, of these fens and peatlands that we have in the UK. Oh wow, it must be a lot warmer in Borneo than it is here today. It's a lot warmer. How are peatlands affected by climate change? So climate change is going to affect different parts of the planet in different ways. Some of it's going to get wetter, some of it's going to get drier. But for peatlands uh, and swamps, it's very important that they're wet. If they become dry, then they'll start emitting some of this carbon dioxide. But with that extra carbon dioxide, it's going to get, make things warmer and drier again. So it starts a bit of a vicious cycle. What can we do about this? Well, why don't we hop on our bikes and take a look? So the important thing is we reduce our emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases and use renewable technologies such as these glorious solar panels or like we were doing today, riding around to reduce our carbon footprint. And what we also need to do is try and protect things like peatlands that help us tackle the problem of climate. So if we all do our bit and try and protect the peatlands, it can help solve the problem of climate change for us and make climate great again.